What's going on DJ Tech Tools, PDOT here, and in this video, we're gonna take a look at the new features of the Serato 1.9.6 beta. Now let's get into the video. So the first new feature we're gonna take a look at is a new anti-drift feature. This is especially useful if you DJ on turntables. If you've ever DJ on turntables before, you know that the pitch is not exact. Because this is an analog pitch and it's not uh, digital, it has this thing called wow and flutter, where it can fl fluctuate between maybe half a BPM, a quarter BPM, maybe a full BPM even if it's directly like on zero or two percent or whatever because of the actual natural motor and not a digital pitch it does fluctuate a little bit now this doesn't really matter if you're you know doing quick blends but if you're doing long drawn out uh, transitions like maybe over 16 bars you might really need the pitch like really tight and really close and this anti-drift feature can come in real handy so first let's take a look at what the pitch looks like on a turntable without anti-drift on and you can see how the BPM fluctuates. So let's take a look. Now as you can see, the BPM is fluctuating from 99.5 all the way up to 99.8, 99.9. Now, half a BPM isn't really gonna kill you, like I said, on a quick transition, maybe two, four, eight bars. But for longer transitions, it might make it a little bit more difficult. So now let's go ahead and turn anti-drift on. So we're gonna go up to the setup, go to the CD vinyl tab, click on anti-drift, and now let's see the difference. Now notice it took a second, but once it got locked in, now the pitch is not moving whatsoever. It is now consistently on 99.7. It's kind of like having a CDJ or a digital pitch where it's one less thing to think about and one less thing to worry about. So the next new cool feature we should take a look at is the favorite effects banks. So I'm gonna go ahead and open up the effects panel and notice in the middle here, we have these new options. We have A, B, and save. So right now, if I go ahead and switch to the three effects modes, change some things up, hit save, then it asks me which bank to save for. So I can say save for bank B. Now if I go back and change something, if I hit bank B, it jumps right back to the effects that I have saved. This is really cool if you have certain effects chains that you really like or certain combinations you really like. Or another cool uh, way to use it that I, I found was say you have three effects on each side save to either bank A or bank B, then bang, in one button, you can switch back to having the single effect on each side. Instead of having to change one on each side, there's a quick shortcut. One thing I still am waiting for is the ability to save all of uh, your effect settings. So say you mess around with all of these and you really dial it in to make it exactly how you want it, you can't currently save it. You could previously on Serato Scratch Live, but for now, at least they give you the ability to save uh, different sets of effects and um, as far as which effect you want, hopefully in the coming uh, features, they do add the actual savable states for each effect. The next cool feature that they just added to Serato DJ is just buried inside of the, the setup. So let's go to the setup, go to DJ preferences, and right here, you'll see that not only can you sort cue points chronologically, but now you can actually uh, sort your saved loops uh, chronologically as well. This can be really cool if say you, you know, save a bunch of loops in the middle of a set and you kind of don't remember which one is where. It gives you a starting point where at least you know now that they're all in the correct order as far as timelines concerned. Another cool feature that they added is the ability to now uh, sort your smart crates by key. So go ahead and add a smart crate. And now if we go into the rules under here, key is now available. And you can actually enter in whichever key you're looking for um, depending on which key notation you use. So now you can actually have your smart crates sorted by key as well, which is pretty cool. The next cool feature that they just added is that they uh, increased the sensitivity for the needle drop function. What needle drop basically means is if you look at the vinyl, um, it's divided into sections, right? So each one of these sections, you can actually make drop to a, a certain cue point. So they'll go in order from one 
all the way down to eight going down the line. So if you're in the club, you don't have uh, your computer in reach, you're still able to get to the cue point you want uh, right on time. So let's take a look at how needle drop works. So go ahead and start my turntable. And notice, I'm gonna start from the first um, cue point, go down the row, and then go back up. And then notice how it jumps in the software. Here's another tip, just because it's on the vinyl, if you're just continuously playing it and you're not picking up the needle and moving it to the next section, it's not going to just jump to whatever the next cue point is just because it hit, hits it on the vinyl. You actually physically have to lift it up and move it to the next cue point. So that's really cool and one less thing you have to worry about. So the last new feature that I'm going to go over is the new Smart Sync for DVS. Previously, Smart Sync was only available on controllers. You had Simple Sync that was available on uh, timecode vinyl or timecode CD, but not Smart Sync. And on top of that, they've added new features to Smart Sync as well. So let's go over um, Smart Sync for DVS and how to set it up. So first, you'll notice I have both of these turntables set to zero pitch. This song running about 100 BPM. and that song running at about 105 BPM. Now, if I go into the setup, go down to sync mode, switch it to smart sync, and here's a new feature right here. Tempo slider affects all sync decks. Turn sync on. Sync this deck. And notice that both decks were running at the same exact BPM and all I had to do was hit sync and it lined up not only the BPM but the beat grid as well. So let's go over that new feature, the pitch slider affecting both sync decks. So we'll go ahead and start with this deck, the master deck, and have this one running as well. Now let's watch what happens when I move the pitch slider for the master deck. Notice both of them moved in sync, BPMs going up and down and you didn't have any wow and flutter on the turntables and they didn't move around. This is an awesome, awesome new feature that Serato has not had in the past. So that's a look at the new features in Serato 1.9.6 beta. A lot of these features are DVS focused, but some of them can be used by all DJs on DVS and controllers alike. All of these new features are a great addition to Serato DJ and I can't wait for this thing to reach the final release version. For more tips, tricks, and news, be sure to check out DJTechTools.com. This is PDOT and I'll see you guys next time.